Hey guys, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. Check it out. We have part two with voice director, actor, and dialect coach JB Blanc. Let's get buzzed. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. JB. Yes, Stacy. Do you think that anyone can be a voice actor? No. No. God, no. Well, Good tell Lord, us why. No. Well, you know, I think, you, you know, here's the, you know, voice actors get asked, any, any voice actor will, do, will, will tell you this, do you do any real acting? Yeah. Do you do any real acting? And it makes me mad as a snake because it, you can't do this without knowing what you're doing as an Absolutely. actor. And, I, you know, I think there used to be voice guys who were the promo guys, the commercial guys. And it was about the voice. And it was about the voice. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you were cast on the basis of voice and having a rich tone. Yeah. And people still say, well, you've got a lovely voice. But yeah. the great quote that is in, know you, you know, I Know That Voice, John's amazing documentary, yeah. is, mm -hmm. you've got a great voice. Yeah, I've been told I've got a great voice. I should do voiceover. I have a really nice pen, but I'm not a writer. There you go. And that it, it is it. a fundamental difference. And I don't, yeah. I, you know, having a good voice is not enough. You have got to, you've got to want to train as an actor, you've got to want to tell those stories, you've got to want to climb inside those characters. You have got to be prepared for utter desolation, rejection, poverty, starvation. <laughs> That's the reality. I'd hate, I'd love to tell you that the streets are paved with gold, yeah. but I Isn't wouldn't be quick, doing you a good money? service. I thought it was right. quick, easy money. Um, yeah, I mean, I ate rice for 10 years, 15 uh, years, 20 years almost. You exactly. Know? You paid dues it big was, time. You paid yeah. dues like five times over. I yeah. did. What about they, auditioning? You audition all the time, I'm sure, sure still. Yeah. So, what do you think makes a great audition, like an audition that really stands out? For most people out there that are auditioning every day and they're like locked up in their own little room, they can't even, they don't even know what they sound like anymore. Yeah, I, mean, I think I think you start off often, you know, especially if you're coming from the on-camera side, Hollywood kind of t teaches you that, you know, you have to look a certain way, you have to be a certain way. Yeah. So you're already within kind of limitations. Yeah. The voiceover world doesn't have that. Um, I think people put limitations on themselves and they don't risk, they don't, tr they don't commit, make strong choices, right. bold choices. That doesn't mean be wacky do. You've still got the, to, to be within the remit of the character breakdown or whatever information you've got. Yeah. But you certainly can make a committed choice and, and, and honor the truth, because that's what really an actor is. You're, you're Sherlock Holmes and you're trying mm -hmm. to discover the truth of a character. You know, the lie about acting is that acting is a lie. Yeah. It's not. It's telling the absolute truth because yeah. that's why we connect it's to that story. Especially in today's world because mm -hmm. that's all they want. And it doesn't matter if you're selling pistachios or, or, or doing a character in a video game. Yeah. And also that, you know, because technology has gotten so much better in games, the, the quality of acting and directing and writing has Big had time. to get much, much yeah. better. So. It's not necessarily naturalistic at times. You, yeah. know, you don't play Bane in Arkham Origins naturalistically. Uh, but you make a committed choice. Um, paying attention to, to the instructions, the copy, the detail uh, is very, very important. If they set out rules, yeah. obey them. Don't Absolutely. screw it up. Don't yeah, lose yeah. the job before. So before right, you've done right, it, you know. Right. Yeah. So, um, let, so let me ask you. So just to try to stand out and be different. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. that's clever. That I mean, it's and it's a it's a kind of shitty clever. Mm -hmm. That's not that's not uh, smart. It's mm -hmm. not a smart way to do it. So you're at home. Yeah. You mainly do character stuff, right? So yeah, I, video I do games a lot. Gonna I, be, I submit on all so, the but not really commercial stuff. I do right. submit on commercials a lot. Do, do you book more commercial or it's more? Coming. Yeah. Okay. No, it's, it's coming. coming. So it's coming. video games. It is coming. I think I'm going to have to get. I need to get a new demo. You had an updated demo. You said it wasn't done in 2002. You <laughs> you might, You're you right. might be I am the competitive in that field. I am the absolute to do it. Um, but check mm. this out. Okay, I so let's, smell some new copy I'm going to be writing. I know, right? <laughs> so, let's, so let's talk about, for, so a video game <laughs> audition comes in, yeah. okay, for some new game, new character, yeah. uh, maybe a new franchise. Yeah. Nobody knows about it yet, no. so there's nothing to really look at. How do you, what do you, what is your process? What do you look at? How do you think, you know, you read the spec, whatever, and then how many takes do you do? Do you edit it before you just send it out and let it go? What's your process? So it'll come in and, the, you know, they can come in by the tens sometimes. It can be crazy if there's a, you know, there can be a batch of games. Um, it really depends on what information you're given. And, and we know in the video game industry that by and large that is very, very little. Exactly. So therefore you really are having to make those bold choices. And, and you know, you could be way off the mark, but if you've done something interesting, they will get back to you and they will notice that. Um, sometimes there's a picture, there's a bit of blurb. 
Um, just pay attention really clearly. And I used to be a very thinky actor. I think one of the blessings was that I did, and it's not going to be what everyone wants to hear, but I, I came to voiceover late in my acting career comparatively. Yeah. And so what what that does is I, I, I built up a kind of range of instincts and and just feels about character that I think made me see a character quickly and jump and be precise and incisive. Right. Mm -hmm. um, if you are afforded the opportunity to show different aspects of the character, do so. You know, don't make it all one tone. Even if it is all one tone in the copy, find somewhere to be little, amused, right, yeah, to, be, to, right. to give it a little bit more of a, something else. Yeah. Um, the first time I look at something... Sad, happy, pissed off. Kind of, yeah. Okay. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the first time I look at something, um, you're sort of, you're, your main instincts are going to say, well, you're going to do what everyone else is going to do. How's everyone else going to do it? Well, don't do that. Right. <laughs> you know, find something else that is yours. Right. Without being tricksy. Mm -hmm. It's complicated. Yeah. It's got to be rooted in the character, but something will come out that is extraordinary if you're thinking in terms of the character and not... Well, how do I make my voice sound clever? You know exactly. what I mean? That's a complex way of saying exactly. it. Exactly. Um, so, I uh, my instincts happen pretty quickly, and I don't have time because uh, since five years ago I started directing, I don't have a second. So, I'm doing my auditions either at one o'clock in the morning, or at five in the morning, mm -hmm. um, and trying to warm up at five in the morning is not fun. <laughs> um, but you, you, you know, that's make sure you're ready. Make sure, and I. It depends on the job. Sometimes I'll fiddle around with it for a bit. Mm -hmm. I'll always make sure I have a nice clean recording. Mm -hmm. That's the basic. And every, make sure that it's modulated and everything's kind of evened yeah. out and it's yeah. normalized yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Because that's a big mistake. You know, you're breaking people's ears before you've even heard whether you can act or not, which right. is silly. Mm -hmm. um, but I think playing really close attention to whatever scraps of information you yeah. have. And again, theatre teaches you to really investigate text. The clues are all in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not just what does the character say. What does the character not say? Why isn't the character saying what you would expect the character to say? If there's a script, what do other characters say exactly. about that guy? Yeah. And that all kind of gives you... Some of them are more straightforward. Uh, some of them have a little trick, like, you know, Bane... Very, very big, massive, huge guy, but very intelligent. Not the normal superhero thug. Right. Um, so I dropped the voice down. I dropped him right down in here. And then he's Latino. We decided to play him Latino because he's, play, he's born in, a, in, a, in an island off, off the, south coast, uh, south, the coast of South America. Mm -hmm. So I, you then have this kind of intelligence that you have to bring to this very big thuggish voice. And it becomes it's found, found a place to sort of sit. Cool. Mm. And then, you know... Is it a voice that you're going to be able to sustain over all those sessions, yes, all the stuff that I'm sure people have told you, yeah. uh, particularly in animation? You know, that's mm -hmm. that's going to kill you. Uh, you've got to be doing something, able to do something that you're going to be able to reproduce many, many times. So it varies. Sometimes it's a few minutes. Sometimes you know it takes do a while to put something together. Do you trust your instincts when you're? I do now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you have to get over the hump of learning of to hear your own voice and yeah. you know the answer phone disease, as I yeah. call right, it. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, get over that and and be critical. Yeah. Be really critical. There's no yeah. room in your booth for your judgment. No, or your ego. For that <laughs> Remember that. Yeah. Don't Remember judge yourself. Remember that. Yeah. Many of your characters are not nice people. Mm. But what I think is one of your gifts, Mr. J.B. Blanc, is you don't just play the evil. You find a way to make them more complex, make them more interesting than just the mwahaha ha villain. I'll go further. I think it's a big mistake to play evil. Mm. Because then you're not being truthful to the character. Uh, the most evil people in the world normalized their feelings. They, were, they, they didn't think they were evil. They had a set of games and they wanted to get their needs met. Right. Evil people are like toddlers. Ah, I want that. Give me that. It's, it's, it's instant gratification. It's, I just want my needs met and so therefore I will do anything at any mm -hmm. cost mm -hmm. yeah. to get that. Um, I think if you're playing mustache twirliness, you know, occasionally there's a big camp job that comes up where it's demands. Sure. I did a character called Zinyak in Saints Row 4, who's this kind of terribly kind of theatrical character, and he's perfectly aware of how evil he is. But he doesn't regard it that way. He says, you know, if you want to, if you really want to learn about evil, learn about Iago from, from Othello, you know. <laughs> and he does a whole diatribe on how why Iago's much more evil than he is. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, the, the world was ill-educated, so I decided to invade you and reintroduce you to your cultural uh, education. 
good evil people. I mean, the evil people are just, they, they just think they're misunderstood. They just want to get their knees met the same way any other character does. Yeah, so you're thinking way past the facade yeah. of, of course. what the character's always, supposed to. Always, 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 always. I mean, even in goofy animation roles, yeah. there's something that makes that character tick. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it might not be something that literally applies to that character. When I was doing The Count of Monte Cristo, I learned a good directing lesson, which is, seems very kind of facile, but I was doing The Count of Monte Cristo. It, we, we had this big scene on the beach. I'm working with Jim Caviezel. He speaks very quietly. I can't really hear what he's saying, and he has a droopy beard. That was that scene where you were doing the Speedos? You had the Speedos on? The, beach, on. the Speedos and the clogs. With and the, the clogs. Rats. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, it was a period yeah. piece. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Pirate Speedos. <laughs> so the, light, the light's going. We've had a, a, one of the extras has had an epileptic fit. Oh um, they've organized a knife fight for Jim Caviezel and Luis Guzman as right-handed fighters. Luis Guzman is left-handed, so they have to redo the whole fight. The crew's frustrated, and I'm doing the first big scene I've ever done in a movie. Nice. I am... Mapping myself. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm I'm not really there. I'm a bit of a mess. And Kevin comes up to me and he said, Italian waiter reading the menu. Italian waiter reading the menu. And it was something so simple, I went, I can play that. Now I'm not going, Madame, you're like a pasta. Yeah. But but it was it was a route in to just say, okay, calm, smooth, we're the best restaurants in town. Mm -hmm. And I could play that. It wasn't a direct signal. It was an indirect signal that made me go, slot. Right. Okay. Now I've got something to cling on to. He calmed me down with one sentence. Simplified you know, so it's it. It's often yeah. not what you're thinking right. that, that, that gets you in there. Um, but there's always something. And I think if you just play that kind of, oh, I'm doing a goofy voice, it's a mistake. It, it's empty. It mm -hmm. doesn't have anything behind it. I love right that. There. It's yeah. empty. Yeah. 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 Did you hear that? That was good. That's some good stuff right 2D there. 2D versus 3D. Yeah, exactly. There you go. 2D yeah. versus 3D. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So good, man. When you're directing talent, how yeah. do you how do you how do you plan on getting the best out of them? Do you just expect them to be perfect I or think are there things that you do to get them to in that 3D mode? I think the, 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 the big mistake and something I've learned is that everyone wants you to be fabulous. Yeah. So, so don't walk in there terrified and being nervous of doing something. Um, come with your, your A game. You know, we you hired, so, so, so bring it. The worst thing is, is people who can't commit. Right. The hardest thing is dragging a performance out of someone. Uh, you give me too much, I can always take you down. Yeah. Like my mother used to say, take a sweater, you can always take it off. But if it's not with you, yeah. you can't put it on. Exactly. Um, and, and it's the same deal. Working to, if every actor, you know, often at the beginning of a session, I'll spend like five, ten minutes, and it'll drive the client nuts sometimes, just getting to know the person if I don't know them. Mm -hmm. Getting them into a relaxed place, knowing that they're safe. That's what an actor wants. They want to feel that they're in a safe environment, yeah. and they're free to, free to be creative. Yeah. You're not going to do that if you're a tyrant, and if you're talking down to them, or you're too busy to have anything to do with them. Right. S spend a bit of time with them, crack a few jokes, and let them know they're in a, a, a humorous, safe environment, even if the material's heavy. Yeah. That's how we operate. That's how. We, that's where we feel most comfortable. And then looking at what strengths the actor themselves is uh, are bringing to the role already. You know, what do they inherently have that I can then nudge and mold and bring out and mm -hmm. uh, and and or put back in its box. You know, whatever yep. it might yep. be. Um, I, I, t I tend to not have like hard and fast rules because it depends on the individual that's walking in. Very good. I really want to see what they're about. Um, if it's a long-term project, I'll do a bit of research on them, see what else they've done, um, and see you know how that connects to what yeah. you know. Well, you're trying to help them make the link between themselves and the character. You yeah. try and build that bridge for yeah. them, yeah. so that they have something to, to to work off, and they feel that it's theirs and that they own it and that they're confident yeah. in it, and they'll give you great stuff as a result. Letting them know that. They're supposed to screw up, otherwise I don't have a job. That's safe. It's yep. okay. Screw it up. Screw it up. Yeah, it's great. We're here all here to screw it up. So I'm cool, gonna do man. it too. Do you really like look at things in such a wide spectrum and and looking at you know what can I highlight that they already have? You yeah, know what I mean? because to, to keep the realness in, into whatever it is that you're 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 doing. They're better Fabulous. playing from a position of confidence than a position of. Uh, you know, I'm 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 behind or underneath this character. I can't. This is some place I can't reach. Start from their basic yeah. strengths, and you're only yeah. going to soar from yeah. there. You know, and it doesn't always work. You know, I've done projects where, uh, you know, I've had an 80 year old woman walk in the door to play a hooker. 
Yeah. That's difficult. Yeah. It's difficult to explain to the poor 80-year-old woman that she has to, you know, say some pretty difficult stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've had guys walk in who are promo guys and never done a game, and they can only deliver a line if it's like that. Yeah. And that's not going to work, because no. I'm being asked to do scorsese great acting yeah. mm -hmm. more and more. Um, it's interesting, the, the role of VO director, especially in games, It's I don't think it's particularly well understood. I think a lot of... You know, we're still in this kind of place where game companies think of themselves as tech companies, and they're not. They're, they're yeah. entertainment companies now. They're performance totally. companies, and I mean, they're delivering I, that degree of performance. You figure they'd have that figured out by mm -hmm. now. Yeah, it's just it's a different culture because, I mean, the main body of them are programmers and coders and designers and, and artists, and, yep. and they're not coming at it from a performance perspective. And I think a lot of games just yep. used to have performance kind of dolloped on top. Yep. Right. And it didn't quite gel. It wasn't the same world. Yeah. And I think now is a really interesting, exciting time because we're really pulling those sides mm -hmm. together. Yeah. And for me, you know, I came from theatre. Everything is collaboration. Mm -hmm. That's how things work. Yeah. They work by you working together. Sorry. I can't just sit there and dictate to you how you should play this part. By working together, that's when the exciting stuff happens. And Absolutely. so I regard the developers as my partners in that. I'm trying to augment their work, and they're trying to augment mine. We're all, we're all trying to for the same aim yeah, at the end, yeah. which is a fabulous gaming experience. Yeah. No, everyone's A game elevates everyone's purpose. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. You hope so. Yeah. Really, really, hope really so. cool, man. So what still inspires you about being an actor? Oh, my God. This, I mean, I mean obviously, you, you love it. This is something that's in your blood. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, as I've said earlier, I've tried to quit. <laughs> I've tried to stop. But just when you when did, I, though, you just thought when about I thought it. Thought like, I was what out the heck? Back yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, when Darn you it. did quit, you kind of felt like, oh my God, what have I done? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I thought I had to grow up and get a proper job, and that was a terrible mistake. Yeah. Um, and you know, it isn't. I, I've had friends who who are phenomenal actors who who don't do it anymore. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it, it's tough. People yeah. find it tough. Um, I still, it's still, every day I go to work with a spring in my step. I mean, yeah. who, who can find that? You know, if you find something you love that much, you'll never work another day in your life. It's an old adage, yeah. but mm -hmm. I really believe that. And uh, are they, is it all golden roses? No, no. I mean, it's a slog. And there are days in, you know, doing four-hour sessions on games where I'm absolutely, and three, four-hour sessions in a day on games. I've done that, you know, more than 10 times. That's, yeah. that, that'll kill you. It's exhausting. Um, and sometimes, you know, you've got to make sure that it's not just your general fatigue that's, you know, thinking, God, I just don't want to do this again today. Right. But it's only, it's only that never lasts very long. Yeah. Um, there are so many stories to tell. There are so many different ways to tell them. Yeah. And I think particularly in gaming right now, this is a really interesting period where VR is starting to take off. We've yeah. just mm -hmm. seen the beginnings of what that can do and yeah. how that's going to change the gaming experience. Yeah. Um, the people, the people, the people. If I wasn't going to see these people ever again, I, I don't think I'd want to carry on living. Mm. I mean that so seriously mm -hmm. because they, particularly in voiceover, because there's not the same paranoia, there's not the same mm -hmm. judgment. We all admire each other's talent. Uh, if I can't do a job, I've got five people I'll recommend like that, and they right. would do the same for me, and it happens all the time. Um, when I met people like... You know, Frank Welker and Morris LaMarche and, uh, and Demage. I like that you call him Morris. Maurice, yeah. No, you know, but, but that's funny. Uh, I'm going to start calling you Morris. Morris, yeah. <laughs> yeah Mo. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, and then they were the nicest people in the world and, and humble and gracious and yeah. generous with I their know. time. Yeah, I know. I've never experienced anything like that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and that that is a, is a, it's a major part. I'm sure a lot of people sit here and say it, but mm -hmm. it's a major part of why it's the true. business works it's so true. well. Yeah. It's well, mutually supportive. It's yeah. almost unheard of in acting, you know. Yeah. It's often it's much mm -hmm. more stubby in the bank. Well, you had mentioned earlier that that when you came over to the US that it was very much a business. Yeah. So now being here for a couple minutes, how do you approach how is your business acumen with regard to your voice acting in your acting career. Yeah, like what, what are some of the business sides of VO that you take serious, that you put into play? Um, it's the discipline of doing it and doing it properly and well and being in the correct kind of shape uh, condition when you arrive for a job, not being late, not being an a-hole is one of the big rules. Don't hung be a dick. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's silly. Well, hungover is okay, yourself depending in the on the character. It depends how well you cover it, Chuck, as I told you. Um, but, I mean... It, it's it's the approach. I think I think it's the approach. I mean, it's, it's I'm f I'm fumbling because I don't often have time to think about it. Yeah. 
but things seem to be going okay, so I think yeah. I'm all right. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've had some big life upsets. You know, I lost everything about eight years ago. I went bankrupt. I had a hell of a time. I was looking for voiceover work on Craigslist. Really? Uh, yeah, I went through a terrible, terrible period of my life. Um, and I still have some of those clients that I found on Craigslist to this day and some very great friendships. Um, I've been, I've run the gamut and nothing yeah. really surprises me anymore. So part of it is one foot in front of the other and keep them going, just yeah. damn well keep going. But I think a lot of it, it changed when I started directing. I think there was a much more regular pattern to it, yeah. you know, and, and it was, I'm consistently in the, you know, I directed Mafia 3, yeah. 95,000 lines of dialogue, over 200 characters, six months solid recording, five days a week. That's a tunnel you go down and, you know, that's all the NPC characters in the game, non-player characters. Mm. Um, you, the, a game I'm, I'm currently directing at the Warner Brothers, over a year we've been recording. You know, we're going to go into next year. So these are they're, they're big, big chunks. So there's a, there's a number of problems with directing video games. One is that as the director, you're basically the only guy uh, who's communicating with the actors who knows what the hell is going on. How every other character said that line because they're all recording separately. Right. You've got to feed into each other. You've got the storyline. I've got eight, 18, <laughs> 20, 30 different storylines going in my head at the same time. I'm making sure that everyone is fitting into that, but also feeling comfortable. I'm trying to look after their voices, because if they're playing orcs and screaming all the time, that's very taxing. Yeah. Um, so there's so much to think about that you're literally like, it's, it's I, I don't necessarily plan the way I go about it anymore. It just I'm probably happens. used to, well, it just yeah, sort of, right, right. 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 So you know, it's just yeah. chaos yeah. most of the time. And you know, the secrecy in the game industry means that I, even I, as the director, don't get the script until I walk into the studio right. quite often. Mm -hmm. So there's not much prep Interesting time. Interesting preparation right. process. Yeah, so I'm yeah. coming off the, you know, I'm playing yeah. off my yeah. back foot the time. whole time. Ten minutes. Yes. But get comfortable with that because yeah. that's so much of what it is, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I walk think into after... game sessions and they go, he's German, he's Israeli, right, he's Japanese, right. go. Yep. After more than 160 games acting and directing, I think that muscle... <sighs> It does get it gets better, yeah. It yeah. gets better, but it doesn't mean that you don't make mistakes. You know, yeah. all the time, and you should. Yeah. You know, if you're going to go wrong, go wrong big. I, I have a question Absolutely. for you in regards to games, man. Yeah. And uh, um, just to clarify, in my own, because I mean, you 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 live in this world so heavily. Um, if you're if somebody's an American actor, okay, and let's say that they're putting together a uh, a video game reel. Mm -hmm. Um. Do you want to show some dialects in there? Like, for example, if you're American and you do a good German dude, do you want to have that on there, or do you want to just stick to, like, American dialects? No, I think you do want that in there, as long as you can nail it. As long as you're absolutely, like you've absolutely, got to be good. Yes. Yeah, you've got to be right on it. you got to yeah. be right on it. Because yeah. if they want, like, a certain dialect from a specific place in Germany, uh... I mean, are they going to find somebody that could do it? And if they can't find it, they're going to find a guy from that region? They're going to research that. I mean, you're going to research that once you get the, you know, the part. I mean, I... Or you'll just say, I'll just do it. <laughs> I'm a bit of a... I'm, I'm a bit of like, a, let me take you to a tour of wait, Germany. Here, I'm go, like, I'm like, go to lunch. I'll do this I'm one. Like, we'll start in Munich. <laughs> The things I do is I jump. The things I do for other people when I'm directing is I jump in the booth to belch for them when they come. <laughs> Stuff like that. That's nice. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it's a glamorous business. Um, uh, yeah, I'm a bit of a Richard Branson without the money. Richard Branson said, if they ask whether you can do it, say yes and figure it out later. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that's okay as long as it's not horse riding, actors. Yes. Yeah. Don't say you can ride a horse if you can't, because I've seen people badly hurt. Um, but but there's a certain amount to, to that. I, I know I will solve it somehow. You, yeah. But for the average actor, I think it, make sure you're damn good at it. It's like saying, it's like you know, don't send a demo out until it's ready for the market. Yeah. Again and again and again. You say, see people, well, my buddy did this, my buddy did that, and we put it, so we slot it together, and there's just no way you're no. going to get hired off it. Yeah. That's why people have to come to someone like you to get this well, proper thank you. professional job. I appreciate job. that. Coming from you, that really means a lot. Well, right? so thank that's, you. It's crazy because, I mean, the, the, you know, no, I shouldn't have the same demo, but it, it still stands up. It needs damn. It needs changing, but it stood up for a long time. It has. It has. That old poor old dog needs dusting yeah. off and smashing up, and <laughs> we'll have a burial. We should, yeah. we should have a ceremony. We'll have a ceremony. We for my should old have demo. a little ceremony. We play the before and then after. <laughs> the new and improved. Um, 
But you know, it's 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 that same thing. Don't go out for what you're. you're every and, and it's a problem. Everyone says they can do dialects. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I can do dialects. You look at gangsters' resumes, and it's just they'll do everything. I'm, I just guarantee you can't. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's really hard. Well, you know? what about people that are wanting to do what you've done? Come from their native country that's not the U.S. and work in the U.S. How do they work? Do they work in their native accent? Should they? try to nail the American accent, a neutral accent, what do they need to do or not do? My question, to, uh, you know, I mean, I think earlier you'd mentioned that, that, you know, some people say, well, I don't want to do a dialect. I want to stay in my own, this is who I am and that's how. Right. My question would be, why on earth would you want to limit yourself? Right. Uh, if you think that you're going to go into this and just play yourself, it is a criticism that happens about actors. But that's not their choice. That's what they're getting paid to, to, to do. You know, people said Nolan North was oversaturating the market because of Drake and that voice that he did. But that's what he was asked to do. Right. Mm. When he does something else, you will not know it's him. He's brilliant. Right. You know, and people still don't believe that he's doing some of the voices that he does. He's a genius. Right. Yeah. But that, you know, that wasn't necessarily the voice that sold him initially. And it's kind of silly to think of limiting yourself, I think. I think if you're a British actor coming here, you have got to have at least one or two good American accents in your pocket. And the mistake a lot of Brits make is they either go full Goomba New York or they kind of do this kind of cowboy, slurry kind of thing. And it just, it just sounds terrible. Um, it, 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 you've got to be really specific about it. You've got to be really, I think you really, really do need. I, I've always said, don't think in terms of what you can't do. Don't you, you, That mustn't be in your purview. You've got to be, think of yourself as as limitless as, as possible. Right. Now, that doesn't mean you should go for some completely wild thing that you're never going to get yeah. cast as. That's not what I'm talking about. But within your little area, you can have a very wide range of skills and you should be having all of those skills. There, you should be listening to a lot of different people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You should be developing that over time. Is there a, an American dialect that is the most called upon in, in the video game world? Like a specific one or just like, I mean, is there a name There's a for sort it? of standard American, yeah. the standard Midwest, but they, you know, I've got friends who live in the Midwest and you know, their mothers talk and say, oh my God, where did I pack the car? Yeah. yeah, so it's not that, no, right? Not, it's yeah, so it's not, it is not yeah. Michigan, yeah. So it's just yeah. very clean. It's just a kind of, yeah, it's kind of a received pronunciation, I guess. Okay. You have the same thing in British, which is kind of BBC English or RC right, or right, RP. Right, exactly. Um, and the truth is, you know, the, it's also about it, physicality, mouth movement. You know, the further west you get, the less effort gets put in. So by mm -hmm. the time you get to California, man, it's too hot and go to the beach. Yeah. It's like, dude, Your come mouth on, barely man. opens. Your mouth doesn't open because, <laughs> yeah. you know, God, some food might fall in it. Yeah. We can't have that. <laughs> um, but, but, uh, but, you know, I mean, America has a lot of different dialects. They just yeah. change over much greater distances. Yeah, yeah, right. right. Um, and so, and there's some very obscure, like in Mafia 3, we had the Yat dialect, which is a kind of bastardization of, of Brooklyn and the South in one dialect. So they say things like hide and foist. Really? Yeah, mm. it's yeah. the foist word I heard. I'm from foist the, word I'm, I heard, yeah. I'm from the French ward. I'm from the French <laughs> ward. <laughs> French ward. Seriously? Yeah, seriously, yeah. they have what? that, you know. And then, you know, but it'll be, uh, I'm talking about the French ward. So you have this kind of it's southern lilt with lit. this. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are, that's some complex stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but back to your question: any Brit coming here needs an American accent and needs to be needs to have it down. Because uh, why would you why would you limit yourself? Exactly. And don't kid yourself that Americans love Brit so much they'll just yeah. get them to do everything. Well, I'll stand out right. because well, because American. I mean, you know, I do different accents and dialects, so it's like it's the same. Yeah. Exactly. It's the same exactly, thing. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Why narrow you, Why narrow down your possibilities? It doesn't right, make any right, sense. Right. And I remember when we worked together, you said, "Well, look, you've got this lovely British rich accent. Yeah. Let's have some of that." Um, but I said to you very clearly, "I do a good American accent." Yeah. You were like, "All right, go really? on." And I did it, and you went, oh, yeah, okay, you yeah. do. And, and so we mixed it. We had a bit of American blended in. Nothing too wild and wacky. No yeah. kind of, we don't have to, you know, do Hick Farmer stuff. And, no. Ain't got to do a devil no, no. that talks like that yet. Yeah. You know, because that's not, that's not our commercial design for that. No. Um, but, but, but something that, it was so, so what surprised me about you, firstly meeting you, uh, and then understanding how, how subtle your understanding of everything was, because you're a big personality. Uh, but understanding that nuance was the way to go. That, yeah. that uh, on a commercial demo that was going to get me an agent, that finely nuanced work, that were that had different feels, that it wasn't kind of from one pole to the other. No. Mm -hmm. Especially for someone who didn't really know what they were doing. 
You well, know. I mean, you were yeah. a great actor, yeah. period, which is, like you said, man. I mean, most That's VO guys, or a lot of VO guys are like, oh, yeah, I want to do VO, so... Here's my demo, and now I'm going to learn how to act. Yeah. I was walking into a, an alien world that I didn't know. You were the guru. You had, you know, and your guidance was not what I expected. It was much. It was. It was now in hindsight much smarter, much cleaner, much more nuanced, and that's exactly what I needed to get an agent. That's what I I needed to get going in the business. Cool. Well, things have changed since smart. then. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's going to nuance what you a little more. No, I, I want to know. Know. <laughs> I want to know, in your mind. You have a beautiful family, you're working hard, you're doing your stuff. What's next? What do you, how do you, wh where do you see the next chapter? Oh my Jenny lord. Um, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff. You know, I want to, I'd like to direct mocap for, for, for a big video game. Um, I'd like to work more in animation. I've, st I've started making some devil devils. Um, and it's going well, and that's great. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm, I'm, there's whole areas of my career that I, I'm certainly not done on camera. There's many more things I'd love to do there. Uh, I I I love this business. I love the people in it. I love the way we go about it. I am truly, truly grateful for the opportunities I've had. And I've found that since I've become more grateful, two things. One, the harder I work, the luckier I get, which is an old mm. an old adage as well. But the more grateful I become, the more comes my way. Mm. Yeah. And and I have you know, whilst I've I've taken some plunges, I've been damn lucky. And and and. But I have to say, I think it's to do with the way I've gone about my business, too. I've tried mm -hmm. to be a good guy and to, yeah. to give the client what they want and not argue my ego's case for a exactly. role, but to, to actually serve the whatever projects I'm working on. So to continue working, to continue to... I, I'm grateful every day I'm employed. Um, I would love to direct some animation. Um, and, you know, to, 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 to keep working in this business. I love it. I love what mm. I do. That's beautiful. Uh, that's, and I we get that, I man. Do. It's yeah. like it's yeah. so evident. Yes. It's you know, it's really fun. You can you can feel you can feel the passion when you're talking about mm -hmm. the stuff that you love. It just pours out of you. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. And, and also just every day is so radically different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every person that walks through my door is so radically different. Absolutely, man. Yeah. That, I yeah. mean who's that? Yeah. And people well, love you. Like they do. I've never met they do. maybe one person said something lovely. bad about you. <laughs> but normally no, I'm just kidding. Almost every single person that has anything to say about you it's yeah. like golden yeah. oh that's really yeah, amazing yeah. also I'm gonna quote our pal Reno Romano when he was on the show he talked about his Joe jobs <laughs> survival jobs oh survival jobs yeah yes yeah I had a few you had a few yeah oh yeah anyone you'd like to share uh, you know uh, but things like delivering bearings to be assembled to prisoners <laughs> um, I worked at a cheese shop mm. I drove people around to see houses for a real estate agent mm. I uh, I sold rugs on a market in Hackney mm. in London, which did is you, deepest dark. Did you London. have to change your accent when you did that? <laughs> well, you've got to do a little bit in it because it's the market. You so know you were I mean? actually doing that. Yeah, this one's lovely, love. Yeah, it looked beautiful in front of the fireplace, that darling. Oh, that's yeah, so beautiful. great! That is Chinese wall, that is. it's none of your muck. Um, I could just see that. Everything's an opportunity to put on. I know, man. Case, you know, I know. And research. then uh, yeah, for about for about. Between six months of the year, I taught drama at a maximum security prison in London, which is oh one of my, my jobs. Oh, my gosh. At yes. Wandsworth Prison, yeah. Are wow. you serious? Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. It was amazing. Did you learn anything from that experience? Oh, God, you learn, I mean, you learn, you're an actor, yeah. you're a sponge, yeah. you, you learn from everything. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. Once you're an actor, you don't walk down the same the street the same way yeah. again. You don't sit in a cafe the same way again. You, were you, you afraid? Was it dangerous? Or? Yes, at times, yeah. yeah. How were um, you received? Uh, well, I mean, there was an education block, and they had a good education mm -hmm. program. Uh, uh, the problem with Wandsworth is that you've got kind of very long-term lifers, and you've got a remand. It's one of the biggest remand centers, which means that people are just in there waiting for their cases. They can't get out on bail, or they've got mm -hmm. no bail. Right. And they're using education to just get out of the cell, and they can be very tricky. Those are the ones you've got to watch. What was interesting was that the, 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 the lifers were the ones that protected me from the remanders. Mm -hmm. So I've actually built up quite good relationships with some of the lifers. The first thing when you work in a prison, the first thing you realize is that everyone is innocent. No one has done it. Mm -hmm. No one is guilty. Um, but they give you a pep talk before you start there and they show you the weapons and the drugs they've found in the last month. And if you're ever, they say to you, if ever you're getting a friend, uh, friendly with a prisoner, just come and see me and I'll show you his record. Wow. You're going to go, oh. I see. But also, you're in this room with the prisoners, and uh, you got a whistle. 
That was my only line of defense. <laughs> it, here's a prison, one of the stories from the prison. I walk into my classroom one day, and there's a prisoner lying on the ground, and there's prisoners all around him, and one prison, another prisoner's on top of him, and he's smashing his head into the radiator. Okay, mm. and I'm freak out. And I run there, I shout at them, they're shouting at me, I blow the whistle, the walls open up and guards come from everywhere, and they pull everyone apart. The guy on the ground is having an epileptic fit. The guy on uh. top of him is protecting his head from hitting the radiator. And I feel like the worst person in the world. Um, but the, but so that was that was one one case where I got the right end of the stick. But they yeah. they all they all came out in my support and said you did the right thing. Absolutely. And then towards the end, it got you know what was interesting was that on the main wing we were doing uh, improv games, theatre games. We'd get some guitars out and, and improvise some songs and play around. On the I also worked on the vulnerable prisoner unit, which is your your rapists, your sex offenders, your the darker stuff. Yeah. And in there, we worked on Shakespeare, Wilde, Shaw, Schaefer. <laughs> Incredible. Because they were middle-class wow. degree holders, by and yeah. large, which was kind of weird. Mm. And, you know, I remember the first day I walked in there, I mean, there was a guy rocking in the corner. It was like walking into one flew over the cuckoo's nest. It was, there, were, there were a lot of people in prison who shouldn't yeah. be, you know, and, yeah. and the systems failed. Yeah. And that was as true then as it is yeah. now. Hats off to you, man, for Shush. just doing whatever it took mm. oh, yes. to, to make things right. You I know what I mean? Nothing if That's not a whore so cool. for a bit You of are me. not afraid to, to, to you're well, a Also, because well, everything was experience. I was going to say, think, you have this arsenal of incredible well to draw from. I think that's your job yeah. as an actor. You know, if Absolutely. you're not working, you've got to be doing something else yeah mm -hmm. not least because you need to put bread in your mouth yeah but also because that is those are that's the place those are the places you find your stuff I mean that's mm -hmm. how you observe that's you know I, I never want to hear anyone say they're bored or they're they're frustrated with it. Um, yes of course but there's a world out there to go see yeah soak right. it up there's a right. ton of stuff there for absolutely, you absolutely man and you have to keep that to keep fresh you know mm. very good very yeah. good hey let's ask JB a uh, table okay. question there oh, there's a table and question. Uh, we don't know what this question is do I have to take the front one you can take whatever you want take oh, one right. from the middle I'll take one from the middle it's yeah. this one yeah. and read it in like a character oh <laughs> A character? Yeah, like a villain. What changes have you made to reduce your impact on the environment? Give us an answer. <laughs> I didn't blow up Moscow. Ah! <laughs> See, that's good that you got into character and went 3D with it. <laughs> Right? He went deep. What would that character say? High five. Uh, very, very good. You, you, you made your point very well. So, but in real life, what would In you real life, what would my answer be to that? You know, I'm, I'm not the best, I will say that. Um, I, uh, I, 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 I do my best. I support Greenpeace, um, and I recycle all my stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't found an electric car that I can afford and like, but mm -hmm. when I do, that is a switch I want to make. Um, so, what else have I done to reduce my, uh, you know, I have energy, energy efficient everything. I mean, California's kind of an easy place to do it because they're yeah. kind of rooting for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah You totally. know, it's not like other places. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're, where they're rooting just really, for They're rooting for you to do it. They, they, they kind of, they, they they kind of give a damn. Yeah. Of course, yeah. that's all about to change, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. you know, Absolutely, so man. Fingers crossed on that. Well, dude, I gotta <laughs> say something. You're what awesome. a sweet guy you are! I mean, you're, really, you're I mean, amazingly talented. When I t when I told you earlier that I that you're like this mega, you are, dude. You are this mega talented guy who's just like one of the sweetest, coolest dudes that anybody could possibly ever meet. Which is probably why you're never going to be out of this business because yes. people are going to just grab you they and just drag, drag you, back you in. If you try to From your mouth to God's ears, please tell your friends. Yes, mm -hmm. I will tell Thank everybody so about you. Are you kidding me? This was an honor. Thank you so, so much, much for having me. I'm so honored. Absolutely. Thank you. Follow Absolutely. JB on Twitter. You. Yes. Follow him everywhere. Listen, look out for him. He's amazing. Absolutely. You're always welcome here, my friend. I'm around. He's around, and we'll see you next time with another show. How's that? Hi, this is JB Blunk, and I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy. Uh, my message to the world is, if you want it, do it. Go get it. Don't ever, ever quit. And bam, there you have it. JB Blunk. On a scale of 1 to 10, how amazing. I think he's a definitely 11 or 12. 15. My yes. God. So I can't cool. believe one, one human being can have so much talent mm -hmm. coming out of his freaking everything. Yeah, it's such a cool movie. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Hey, we're going to be back next week with another awesome episode, so please tune in. We will. And keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We love you guys. Thanks for watching. And just remember, you, you always have time for a little buzz. Come on.
See you next time, and remember, you always have time for a little buzz.